brilliant. Danny Flexen here for seconds out at the GB English Institute of Sport with Peter McGrail. You've been Danny. selected. Yeah. Uh, all the hard work has paid off, or at least to an extent. You've still got to get through a qualifier, obviously. But how delighted are you? Well, you kind of knew you were going to be here for a while, I guess. Yeah, and obviously you've been working with this now for four years from uh, the last Olympics. Well, it's five years, but uh, after after we went out to Rio, I knew I wanted to, to make Tokyo. So to be selected for the first qualifier is uh, is brilliant. Only me and being the lads now and the girls, obviously, we're, we're all just working hard now and we're, we're, we're going to be ready to put a show on in London, definitely. Who do you highlight as your main kind of rivals at the way for the world qualifier? Uh, for the European qualifier, Sorry, for the European yeah, one. for the European one, uh, it's probably going to be you've got the Ukrainian who's he's had a silver medal at the last two Europeans, and uh, Kate Walker, an Irish kid who's a good kid, he got a gold at the last European Games. But uh, I'm very confident going in, going into these European qualifier as in the last two World Championships, I'm the only. European fighter to, to be on the podium at, uh, at 56 kilo and then obviously at 57 in the last one so uh, I'm very confident that uh, I can come away with a gold medal and, and my spot as well at the Olympics. You're often highlighted as one of our best medal hopes for the Olympics. Does that add extra pressure or does it spur you on? Uh, nah, it spurs me on. It, it's Obviously I've always believed in my own ability and for everyone to be putting me up there with uh, one of the best hopefuls at, for the team with some of the boxers that we've got. It's, uh, it's great for me confidence and uh, I know I can, I can bring a medal back from Tokyo. Obviously the start of your pro career, although you don't want to think about that too much now, some of that will be based on how you do at the qualifier and then at the Olympics themselves in terms of the deal you get, the profile you come out with. How much do you let that enter your mind at this stage or is it all predominantly on getting a medal? Uh, at the moment it's just about qualifying. It's uh, Obviously in the back of your mind it's always you're going to go to the Olympics and the better I do there, as you said, the better starts me pro career I'm going to get, the better contracts I'm going to get, better fights, probably more money. So it is there at the back of my mind but you can't think too far ahead because if I start thinking about how much money I'm going to get now as a pro and then I go to London and I don't even qualify then oh, yeah. it's like wow, do you know what I mean? So basically all I'm focused on now is getting myself ready for these qualifiers and I know that if I'm 100% ready, 100% sharp, and I put the work in, in the gym, in the ring and out the ring, then uh, I can win these qualifiers and get myself a good seat going into Tokyo. Have you already had kind of promoters buzzing around trying to convince you to sack the qualifiers off and, and turn pro early? Uh, no, no, not not, uh, not getting me to trade the Olympics or anything because uh, I think that they all know that. You're I've more valuable on, for them. Yeah, <laughs> well. once obviously I get a medal, if I get a gold medal, which I know I'm good enough to. Uh, I'm going to be more valuable for myself and, and to them as well. So I think all the promoters know that uh, I've stayed on from Rio to, to go to Tokyo Olympics and I'm here now and not too long before I'll be turning pro towards the end of the year. How worrying was it during that period where the qualifiers and, and the whole Olympic process was kind of up in the air with Aiba and the issues they had? Were you kind of worried? Because you only, a lot of people only get one Olympic cycle. I mean, you're still quite young, so it may not apply as much to you. But if they hadn't managed to sort things out, and there was talk of the Olympics not being at these games, that sets you back four years. Yeah, it, it, it does in a way, but you would have had to just see the positive side of it. The, the way I was looking at it was, I, I, I always knew that it was going to be there anyway, but uh, on the other hand, I thought, if it's not there, then I'm just going to be turning pro quicker. I'm going to be able to box in front of my own fans, all the family. Even though all the family are coming to London, but it's just it's going to be different boxing as a professional, isn't it? And the whole Liverpool are going to be behind me, and I, I'm looking forward to to pushing on with the next step of my career after obviously I get my Olympic gold. Is there anyone in these sort of situations that you either look up to or that you go to for advice, like great amateurs of the past or anyone from your home city, for example? Uh, no one I go to really to ask for advice. I just obviously I listen to the interviews of, of all the boxers around the country and. Obviously you've got Joshua down here, uh, you've got the likes of Callum Smith who went through the same system I went through and now he's a world champion and I know he's only a, few, a message away or a phone call away if I needed to ever speak to him. So I just keep doing what I'm doing now and everything I'm doing, it's, it's, it's going well. It's going well at the minute and uh, we're nearly here now, we're at Tokyo. It's been, uh, been a long five years, like, but uh, we're at the end of it now and I'm looking forward to 
Of from myself, it's a fit. I'm getting myself on enough lanes to talk well. You're obviously a shining star from Everton Red Triangle, a club that's going from strength to strength. Definitely. How much does that mean to you that you're still representing them to an extent and also to the guys back in the gym? Because some of them just signed with Frank Warren, I was yeah. reading yesterday. Yeah. They're putting on pro shows on a regular basis. You've helped inspire them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's brilliant for the gym, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking forward to obviously getting my amateur career out the way and turning professional, getting back in with the lads. They're, uh, they're all coming through the ranks now. Some of them are going to be boxing for titles this year. And as you said, the, the pause button, getting, getting the lads out on the shows regularly. So they're building their careers and by the time I eventually turn over, and obviously my profile is going to be big off the Olympics and hopefully the medal, then... Uh, I'm going to be able to put the gym on the map even more. And, get my TV yeah, bill, probably. That, that's what I mean, and, and, and we're all going to be pushing on, pushing each other on. The sparring that I've got there, I've got Nick Ball, Andrew Kane, Bradley Strand, uh, even like Connor Butler and Joff Walsh, they're a bit lighter and a bit heavier, but the, the sparring there is going to be great once, once I'm back in there full time and just exciting times for me, for me and everything that's angle. And just before we let you go, we asked this last time we interviewed you, but there'll still be people out there that want to, yeah. it might be a bit late to the yeah, journey, yeah. but they still want to jump on the uh, the bandwagon. How can they find you on social media? Uh, on Instagram and Twitter, just Peter underscore McGrail, and then on Facebook, the name's just Peter McGrail. Brilliant. Well, so, we wish you the very best of yeah. luck in the qualifier. I can't wait to much. see it. Nice one. Thank you.